guys, so after following a 60s makeup tutorial and trying to follow 1930s makeup tips, today it is time to follow a beauty guide from 1950s. I have a video here that I found on the Tracy Zero D channel. I will link to the video below so that you can watch the whole thing. It is quite long. It is a almost half hour uh, beauty guide, very obviously sponsored by a soap brand who is trying to kind of promote their antibacterial soap, if I understand correctly. But there are some really good kind of contemporary beauty tips in there from the 1950s and it shows beautifully what the standards were and kind of the rules to beauty back then. So we're gonna watch parts of that together today and I'm gonna try and follow some of the tips that they give and see how I end up looking if I were to follow 1950s beauty tips. So we're gonna get started straight away. The video begins with a demonstration on how to clean the skin on your face using that soap and kind of a breakdown of the ingredients. It's just like a really long commercial actually. So I'm gonna just start off with a little bit of positive affirmation. It's really beautiful. Let's take a look. Look in and you will see yourself as you are and as you wish to be. Study yourself. For who is beautiful if not you? You at your best. There's no one in the world exactly like you. So why be a copy? Why be just another imitation? Be yourself. Yourself at your glowing best. Body, face, hair. That's the objective of the clean look plan. So the clean look is kind of what, what they call the whole kind of end result of this. But what you get if you follow this whole tutorial, you'll get the clean look and be part of the clean look clan, if I understand correctly. <laughs> She's moving into the whole skincare now, so I'm gonna skip that part. I have taken the liberty of already cleaning my face, not with antibacterial soap, if you don't mind. <laughs> Study your own needs. You're an individual. Skin differ according to temperament, general health conditions, climate. But always first cleanse and get that blood up. You see, your skin's actually a mirror. It does reflect your entire way of life. What you eat. How well you rest. The exercise you get. And let's go every day looking glass into a magic world. The clean look plan too starts with you. Look there seems to be a problem with the sound here. Okay, so luckily this bit of actual makeup tutorial is also uploaded to the Glamour Days channel actually. So, and I know that it does have the right sound there because I've already seen that one before. So I'm gonna move over there and then come back to the clean look video when that's done. But yeah, we're gonna have to move to a different video, but it's, it's the same video essentially. A clean look makeup to bring out all your natural feminine beauty. Makeup is a study in itself. You want not only to know how, but when to use it. For instance, you wouldn't any more go to school wearing mascara and eyeshadow and lipstick than you would go to school wearing an evening gown. Oh, whoops! <laughs> okay, listen up girls. You are not supposed to go to school wearing mascara and lipstick. Okay, so apparently the thing to do is to cover your head with a towel when you go to do your makeup, which is interesting. I love how in all of these videos there's like this professor looking guy doing the actual makeup, so let's move on. Consider first a foundation. Foundation are bases which go on over throat and face to add a texture and color tone. Whatever the type of foundation, smooth it into the skin. Blend and keep blending till the foundation is completely unnoticeable. All right. I can do that. They're using a creamy formula, it seems, but I'm gonna use my liquid here and they are definitely applying it with fingers. Which I have to say, for things like foundation, it really is easiest to just apply with your fingers. I used to do that for years before I got good makeup brushes. Not sure how I feel about having foundation on the palm of my hand, I have to say. I guess if you're a soap brand, you're gonna want me to clean my hands afterwards. Did I do well? To choose the right color, study yourself. Your total coloring is strictly your own. Experiment on your face to find the right foundation color. I'm pretty sure I if have the right color. If your skin tends to be sallow, try foundation with some pink in it. 
For a skin that tends to have too much color, use a light foundation to take away some of the color. But whatever you do, don't use your foundation as a thick mat. No matter how thickly you put it on, That's my you girl. can't hide a badly cleansed, broken out skin. And a thick foundation emphasizes wrinkles, makes for an unattractive, unreal look. Put on lightly, blend, and keep on blending. Sorry. Now to the question of rouge. Rouge is a tint, not a paint. Use lightly and blend it on. I really need to get my hands on some cream blush for these vintage videos because they're using them all the time. But last time when I did my 30s video, someone in the comments of commented something which I was like, how did I not come up with this? And that is that a perfect cream blush is a lipstick, actually. And I have been using lipstick as blush for years, so I don't know why. Again, I didn't think of that. So I'm gonna use that. Are there any rules except for not applying it too heavily? And slightly below the bone under your eye. Again, blend and keep blending All right. upwards and you add sparkle. Rouge, unblended into the skin, used heavily, makes you look older. If it's noticeable, it's badly used. This is true too with accenting eyebrow color. Oh, wait, wait, the wait, I'm not ready for eyebrows yet. If noticeable, it's badly applied. I like that philosophy for face makeup. I do tend to agree with that. So let's keep it nice and subtle. You know, I actually do feel like creamy blushes look very pretty and natural. So, all right, eyebrows it is, right? Frame the eye, not to be noticeable Pencil. in itself. So again, Just subtlety. Just accent the natural look. Subtlety Sketch out here. the line of each hair in the direction in which the hair grows, beginning with the line parallel with the corner of the eye, blending at the end of the brow. Don't let the end of the line droop. Oh. Now, brush the hair up with a Wait. dry brush. Following the little hair strokes. All right, so a clean brush, right? I have a spoolie, hope that's good enough. Now, brush the hair up with a dry brush. My hairs won't stay up. And then, taking a small comb, turn down the tips of the hairs. You'll have a beautiful, clean line. Oh, I get it, yeah. Hmm. Eye shadow is also an aid to eye beauty. Choose a color that brings out your own eye color. Blue for blue eyes. Using just a bit of the shadow in your finger, Begin tracing the line as close to the lid edge as possible. Here, green is used for hazel eyes. I have hazel eyes! Green it is! So I have this really old single eyeshadow here that is a pretty kind of olivey green with a little bit of golden shimmer. I do think they would have used matte, but I don't currently have a matte green eyeshadow in my possession, I'm afraid. So. This is gonna have to do, let's see. I was supposed to use my fingers and apply it near my lash line, if I'm correct. Let's just watch that again. Using just a bit of the shadow on your finger, begin tracing the line as close to the lid edge as possible. Here, green is used for hazel eyes. Start halfway across the lid. Mm -hmm. This makes the eye look larger. Now blend and blend. Ooh, all the way into the eyebrow. Out and up toward the hairline. Okay, I'm not too sure how I feel about that. I think I was more into the 60s super shimmery <laughs> all the way up to the eyebrow look than this, but hey, you won't know if you never try. It is really subtle though. That's nice, I guess. Okay, what's next? Used too thickly, the effect is hard, vulgarizing. Oh, mascara. Use tastefully, use sparingly. Wipe brush almost dry. Then apply just on the top lashes only. Okay, so I don't have one of those cake mascaras that they would have used in the 50s, but I can wipe my kind of regular mascara one to try and apply my mascara then. I have a tissue here. So let me wipe off that mascara. What a waste. Brush each lash individually. Now take a dry brush. Whoa. I have to say, guys, 
I am really hot under this towel. <laughs> it is really warm today and this is not helping. Okay, so that is that part done. And then take a dry brush again. Brush each latch separately. How? So all but just a touch of color is brushed off. The beauty of the eye is what you see, not the makeup. All right, all right, all right. Brush everything back off again. All right, moving on. The use of lipsticks is one of the greatest tests in your artistry Lipstick. and good taste in using makeup. For the cleanest, most natural line, use a brush, a little patience and a little practice and you'll be an expert. Fill the brush with color. As always, you can check color by effect. Do you notice the lips themselves or do you say, there is a lovely woman? Trace a clean, unexaggerated line, staying as close to the natural line as possible. If lips are too thin, fill right out to the outermost edge of the line. If too full, stop within the line. Brush in lipstick, filling the line right out to the corner. There now is a lovely is lady. Oh. Blot off all excess. Unblotted lipsticks are pasty looking. Blot for the smooth, clean, natural look and study the impression left on the tissue. I'm moving on to powder. Is she holding a cotton ball? Here we go again. <laughs> if you've seen my 60s video, you will know how I feel about touching cotton balls. And she's holding a really big one in her hands right there. Do I have to do this? Okay, let's move on. Take a clean piece of cotton. Powder. Use fresh each time for absolute cleanliness. Oh, that's a lot Fluff of powder. on powder for a softening effect. And then brush and brush off. Wait. No, I'm gonna have to brush with the cotton ball. You know what? I'm actually really glad I don't live in the 50s. Even if it's just for this. Oh, cotton. Okay, and then brush it off. Oh! <laughs> Goosebumps everywhere. Oh, this is horrible. <laughs> okay, I'm glad that's over. My towel isn't staying. Oh, neither is hers. That's good. Hey, we're being authentic here. All right, so now the guy's coming in again. What's he doing? Let's rewind a bit. For a final professional touch, take a sponge, dampen it only slightly, and pat all over your makeup. I don't really see that working with modern makeup, but we're gonna roll with it. He seems to be using a really soft sponge, so I guess that's a natural sponge. I did have one of those stashed away somewhere before I moved. Let me see if I can find that one, and if not, I'm gonna come back with another sponge. Found it, natural sponge. So she says dabbing, but he is most definitely wiping. For a final professional touch, take a sponge, dampen it only slightly, and pat all over your makeup. Very gently though. This does actually look nice. I think this has a similar effect to spraying with a bit of water or a fixing spray like we do nowadays. It looks, yeah, this does actually look really nice. And it didn't wipe off my makeup, so that's good. Probably because I used like a whole thingy of loose powder. Okay, so this is where the Glamour Days channel ends, but this video continues. The final freshening for that natural, clean look. Now look at your... Step one of your one, two, three clean look plan completed. Your face... Oh, clean, clean look plan! Not plan! <sighs> wow! <laughs> it's shining beauty naturally emphasized with a natural makeup. Can I take off the towel now? Please. Safe beauty that is the beauty of natural health with a clean look makeup. All right. Beauty. Okay, so then you moving on to the bath ritual, bath and I think I'm gonna skip most of that as well. For final body cleanliness, remove unwanted hair by waxes, a cream removal or a razor as you please. Since the soap leaves only a faint clover fresh aroma, it doesn't interfere with your using your own cologne. But as in face makeup, so in cologne. Used to emphasize natural freshness, not to mask. 
I have that brand of cologne. Pretty sure it is the original type. Wait. I have the 4711 cologne. This is a special edition, new kind of edition, but the scent is mostly the same as it has been since the 18th century, the 17th century. I'm not sure. I'm, I do know that is really, really old. My grandmother has been using this her whole life, so it reminds me of her. But yeah, it's a classic scent. So let's put this on and be super authentic. She used a lot, so let's use a lot. Oh, I love this scent. Okay, by the way, in case you're wondering, my special edition has a little bit of lavender and thyme in there, but it is mostly just the original scent. Oh, the towel's off. Yes. Body immaculately clean? How about the line of your figure? You get a lot of exercise every day. You who go briskly about your dusting. You who walk swiftly to work or school. But we promised you shortcuts. All you need to do to maintain a, f a good figure is to be swift about your dusting. Be sure to dust. Dust all the time. And do your cooking and your cleaning. This is actually a 50s video, so can't blame them. And I have to say, mopping the floors is a really good exercise. So what other tips did I have? And here's one quick five minute method to achieve beautiful posture, which immediately gives your figure a good clean line, makes you graceful, and is an exercise in itself. Stand with your back against a wall. Place the back of your heels against the wall. Pull hip muscles together, tightly. Push forward and up, right up against the hip bone. See how that flattens your stomach, straightens your spine, and with just this straightening, you'll take as much as two inches off your measure. Practice every day until you're able to walk away from the wall keeping this beautiful, clean line. That was interesting. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I do believe they have some hair tips here as well. A graduate of step two of your clean look plan. Body clean, body line clean. And so we come to step three, the clean look plan for your hair. No matter how perfect the rest of your appearance is, the effect will be spoiled if your hair isn't radiantly clean, alive. As in skin care, the two most important factors for scalp health are cleanliness and hair. circulation. Hair, the roots of the hair, are as living as body and face skin. Blood must be kept circulating through them, particularly through the roots, the scalp. If the scalp isn't kept clean, stimulated, hair can't be beautiful. To keep your scalp healthy, every single day brush and keep brushing. Not Ooh. just your hair, but your scalp. Get that blood up in your scalp. Push the dirt off. 50 to 100 strokes. Brush from the back of the neck to the hair end. A hundred times! Then the hair will shine. Oh my god! Start brushing with clean brushes. A hundred brush strokes every day. That is bound to make my hair super greasy. <laughs> Will you excuse me if I don't do a hundred strokes of brushing right now? <laughs> really getting into that scalp here. Although I have to say we still do scalp massages to kind of promote scalp health and like hair growth and things like that. I mean there must be some truth to it. I just don't really believe in a hundred brush strokes. That seems a little bit excessive. But I do know that ladies with very long hair tend to brush their hair a lot. And so do girls who um, don't use shampoo, so like no poo method. They brush their hair to indeed pull down the oils from the roots to the ends of the hair. So I know that some girls still use this technique and it does work for them. I'm not sure if it, will, if it would work for me and the current state of my hair, so. For sweet smelling hair. Wash hair once a week with this 87... Once a week, guys! They wash their hair once a week. I think it's really funny how that kind of changed with the decades to having to wash your hair daily and now we've gone back to kind of washing less. Once a week and then a hundred brush strokes. So I guess it is pretty much no poo. Um, except for that one time a week. Okay, so when the hair is washed Brush hair out of doors if you can. Brush it dry after washing if possible. 
Brushing brings My grandmother's there. Oil. Outside, brushing after she's washed her hair. And it doesn't take greater elasticity. A true vital look which makes I need that beautiful. curling magic. Coming out of the shower, hair wash sure and brush around curls. the base of the neck and to the ends of the hair. To get the best effect from brushing, bend your head down so that you get a flow of blood into the scalp. Brush with full strokes right to the ends of the hair. Upward and outward, feel the blood tingling in your scalp. Oh yeah! <laughs> Look at her being all oh, excited about your brushing hair. Your hair is shining new beauty. <laughs> Oh, I love and this. now you're ready for a checkup on just how clean the line of your hair do. <gasps> Hairstyle must suit you. And in makeup, start by studying you. Here the line is too severe. It should be softened. Thus softening the whole appearance. But note that the line is being kept simple. Oh, I liked it better before, I no have to say. No matter the curls. No draggling of hair around the neck. The important thing is line, not curls. Simplicity is the greatest beauty. The simplicity of shiningly clean hair, set in the way that best fits your face and activity. Here, the hair is a shapeless bush. So first, it is pulled simply back from the face, giving a clean, simple, Oh, there's a great tip for my failed brush out that I did a few weeks back. <laughs> Could have just done Hair this with can it. Be used too to reshape the line of the face. Because this forehead is high, a softening bang which also shortens the face length is used. I like that. That's cute. And there you have a simple hairdress. So simple you can take care of it at home. Clean and look. The line clean. A hairdress that brings out all the best lines of your face. <laughs> Aww. Tight little corkscrew curls all over your head make it look cluttered, messy, and make you look older. No hairdress that can't be brushed is a good hairdress. So brush... Do you hear that? Everybody who keeps telling me off for brushing my curls? Take a good listen. Let's play that again. No hairdress that can't be brushed is a good hairdress. So brush and comb your hairdress into place. <laughs> Couldn't into agree more. <laughs> around your head. Clean and simple. No tightness, no frizz of curls. Just a fine, clean, shining line. Every hair shining lustrously. Clean hair, clean in line, can be one of your greatest beauty assets. <laughs> Aww. And now you've completed your one, two, three clean look plan. Alrighty, so we've come to the end. Let me put on my glasses so I can see you, I guess. So I came out looking not very different from what I looked like when I put on my makeup this morning before taking it off again. This eyeshadow is very, very retro and dated, but all the rest is really okay, I have to say, actually. And this is not too far from how I do my own makeup in day-to-day -day life and I do actually think it looks really good and I think they gave a few tips that again would be very useful to ladies nowadays. I feel like we tend to go overboard with makeup a little bit and I am a strong advocate of the more natural approach so yes that was the clean look beauty guide. I guess I'm gonna have to end this video here guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for loads more beauty and lifestyle videos. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, there's a link in the description box below. Thank you so much for your support. I was gonna put my glasses on. <laughs> there's another video here that you may also enjoy. You can go watch next. Thank you for watching and I will see you very soon in my next video. <laughs> Bye!